All right. Back at the 20-sided store with the Netrunner Tournament. Round two. This tournament took place on May 18th, 2014. I think I split round one, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. <laughs> the, video, the video's on YouTube. You can go watch it. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did split round one because... Um, my Jinteki deck got a kill, and my criminal deck fell on its face, unable to siphon. All right, so, yeah, I made, um, I'm not playing the usual decks, because I figured this would make more interesting videos. I wanted to get lots of uh, new cards from Honor and Profit out there to show you guys. I couldn't guarantee that all my opponents were going to be using them, so I played Criminal and Jinteki to load up on new cards uh, and see how they work. I tried to play some less appreciated cards, less popular cards, you know, that people ne haven't necessarily uh, been talking about so much. Uh, so it's me on the left playing Personal Evolution. Yeah, I didn't use any new identities, but I did use, um, you know, new, uh, new cards. Uh, my opponent playing Silhouette, so rock on. Rock on with the honors on the left and profits on the right. Let's see what happens. Uh, what other kind of news is there to discuss in Netrunner times? Uh, lots of uh, Lunar Cycle spoilers coming out. Um, you know, lots of currents going to enter the game. We'll see what happens with that. All right. Oh, it looks like a good hand I have. Lots of ice in there, yeah. Okay. Defend early against that criminal onslaught. What's he got over there? Oh, I think I saw an HQ interface, but <laughs> I don't think you're going to play that on Jinteki, right? All right. Double ice and a single credit. No money cards. That's a shame. That's a shame. Oh, well. Sure, Gamble. Oh, it's a doppelganger. Ooh, draw a card. And... It's an alias. Ooh, a central only Sentry Breaker. What a strong card to play against Jinteki. Um, you know, it's against Jinteki, you probably only want to run centrals. Right? And sentries are their weapon of choice. So, well, you mostly only want to run centrals. <laughs> Alright, so drop my Jackson Howard. Start drawing new cards. Look for some money cards, maybe. What do we have there? Hokusai, Ronin, Ice, Philei. Okay. So I'm putting an upgrade in HQ. I really love upgrades a lot. Upgrades are like ice uh, with subroutines that are guaranteed to work, right? At least most of them are. <laughs> um, you know, so it's like if you have ice, even if the subroutines are really synergized with the rest of your deck, you know, every single runner deck ever has a way to counter ice. Uh, there really isn't a lot of ways to counter upgrades. Um, you know, other than something like Quest Complete or Singularity, right? And even then, certain upgrades might affect them, so... Upgrades are just really, really strong. Uh, I can see why in the core set there really weren't too many of them, but now we're getting a lot of upgrades. Uh, we're getting some really damaging ones, too. Okay, so even though he's a criminal with a Count Siphon and all that, he drops a Magnum Opus and a same old thing. That's pretty dangerous. Pretty dangerous. Well, I guess the Magnum Opus, you know, makes a lot of sense if you're using those central-only breakers because they're powered by money uh, and they're slightly inefficient. So you can make up for that with the Magnum Opus. Just take eight, take eight, um, whatever, and then you know you can break pretty much anything. Okay, a double upgraded HQ with more ice, right? Uh, 
And he's not running and trashing the Jackson, um, which is interesting. If he has a magnum opus, he basically has infinite money. He doesn't even lose the run because he has a doppelganger. Uh, he really has not a lot to fear other than... Well, I guess he has something to fear on HQ because uh, Inazuma, right? It's a double stacked... You, you know, you need against Jinteki a Sentry Breaker to start with, right? To run a single ice because there could be uh, all these damaging sentries like Neural Katana. That's been true since day one. Okay. Um, but now there's some code gates that do damage, right? I mean, well, Wall of Thorns always did damage, but that, forget that, right? There are now code gates that do damage, like Yagura, okay? So, do you need a code gate breaker? No, I'll hit a Yagura on turn one. I'm fine with that, right? But because Inazuma exists, if they have two ice stacked, and you don't want to suffer the subroutines of the second ice, you absolutely need to have a code gate, a decoder, right? To run any server with two ice on it. Um, in addition to the Century Breaker, right? Because uh, the Inazuma might hit you and then force you to slam into a Century Breaker, a Century you can't deal with, and then you're in big trouble. So I double stack both my servers. I use the uh, Medical Research. I love that card. Um, I like it a lot more than Celebrity Gift. Celebrity Gift gives you a lot more money, right? I think a lot, I mean, Celebrity Gift is good in the right deck, especially Cerebral Imaging, but I don't like showing the, the Corp the cards. It's just too much. Uh, all right, so in R and D, I've got a pup for the tax, and then the Himitsubako keeps him out. Nice. But I don't really mind giving the runner money as much. I mean, there are some games where the runner is broke, and I don't want to give them any money at all. Um, but uh, in a game like this, where it's a criminal with magnum opus, it's like they already have a zillion credits. The number of credits they have is not going to make the difference in this game. I will let them have all the credits in the universe. You know, so basically it ends up being gain five credits for three. That's like a better restructure, right? It's, it's a restructure that's so much easier to play. How could you not play that card? It's incredible. Um, okay, he's got the gun. Uh, I'm guessing he put the gun out, assuming there's some Caprice Niseis going on, but all he needs to deal with that would be a sneak door because my archives is empty and my only upgrades are on... Uh, HQ. I guess he could use the gun on Jackson Howard, but Jackson Howard isn't even defended by ice. All he has to do is run it, and then he can doppelgang away from it. it I, you know, I, I don't know why he... I, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, he's just letting me keep Jackson Howard. Um, he only made the one run in R&D, really. He's really building something up there. He threw out a feint. Uh, okay, so now he's running HQ, and here's the mistake that I discussed earlier, which is running a two-ice Jinteki server... Uh, when you don't have a decoder, right? My front ice is Inazuma. He admittedly can't do anything about it. And then I got a Fenris. So you can have your bad pub, but I'm taking your brain with me. That's right. Boink. Brains away. And there's a leverage. Well, that's not a good brain damage because he wasn't going to use that against Jinteki anyway. Or at least he shouldn't. Hmm. Hmm. Got some thinking going on here. I think he has one click left, and he has a lot of cards in hand. Uh, so, you know, he's going to have to throw out some with that brain damage. He's thinking about you. He's had to use one of them to save it, basically. Okay, throws out a quest complete, which you don't really need because my remotes are unprotected, and then a backup alias. Okay. I'm setting up some more remotes over there. It doesn't seem to be running them, right? That's When you're playing Jinteki, that's the thing you got to figure out early on. Is this opponent the one who's going to run the remotes, or is it the one who's not going to? And once you learn their pattern of behavior, you can play accordingly. Which is why against Jint a Jinteki player, all right, you have to make them think that you're the kind who's not going to run remotes and then run them. Or you're the kind who is going to run remotes and then don't run them. Or, bat, you know, vice versa. Okay. 
All right. I think that's the pest port he's got now, which I believe is the um, – that's the decoder, so – My uh, my HQ ice stack uh, is no longer strong enough. He's throwing away his account siphons. That makes no sense to me because now he has the decoder and the century breaker and money and a magnum opus. He could account siphon. I don't know why he'd throw those out instead of other cards. Oh well. And he's got the bad pub too. Is that afraid of being tagged? I think maybe it's because you know what it is? I think it's the double upgrades on HQ, right? He's, he's assuming that that's like a Caprice Nisei kind of setup and that the account siphons will just be a waste. Um, you know, or maybe he, he knows exactly what it is and he just doesn't, you know, he's, he's just not going to run a double upgraded HQ and suffer the consequences. Okay. All three central only criminal breakers. He can run any central he wants. Beautiful. throw away the cards in my remote that has an ice on it, I replace it with a new card, and I take some money. I assume he's going to start running R&D now, uh, that he can get in, uh, and he seemed to be so afraid of HQ, he threw away his account siphons, so I need that money in case I have to play the future perfect uh, side game, right? I need as much money as I can, because if I get broke, uh, I can't play the side game. <laughs> All right. So he's playing faint. Uh, I think that's faint anyway. Right? Um, and I think what I have on HQ is Hokusai Tori Hanzo. So I'm asking him if he's going to access. He says he is going to access. So then I res Hokusai. I res Tori Hanzo. So that's five credits. And then I spend two credits on top of that to turn the Hokusai net into a brain damage. What a beautiful combo they've created, right? All right, so I do my brain damage. He now has two brains, uh, hand limit of three. Okay, he's accessing. Uh, is he going to access the traps first, my hand first? He's got enough money to trash all the traps uh, easily. Oh, I guess he didn't access? Or I don't know what happened there. He didn't even take a card from my hand. He said he was... The Hokusai wouldn't have hit him if he wasn't accessing, right? He had to access a card from my hand if he said... if it You know, for the Hokusai to even hit, because it's when the run is successful. Um, that's very strange. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, he should have accessed the card from my hand. Um. Oh, he doppelganged that remote. Maybe he accessed the card from my hand when I wasn't looking. Uh, he's running R&D. There's a card to put back, huh? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. I know what it is. Second card? Uh, second card. 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 It, it'll always work whether you have money or not. If they run it, they'll get slightly punished. All right? And then, you know, it's it's a fast way to get it into the archives, only slightly slower than, you know, drawing a whole bunch of cards and then discarding it. Right? You just install over it to get it into the archives uh, later. You know, but you're, you're testing, uh, you know, what the runner's going to do. 
Okay. Oh, he was. Uh, that's what he was. He was just. He ran the archives because he wanted to score that notoriety. You know. Oh, I score the House of Knives when he has zero cards in his hand. Yep. That's that's game. <laughs> Oof. 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 Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? It's like, you know, if you have a notoriety in your head and you have a doppelganger and you have all three central only breakers, right? You can it's really easy to get the sort of one track mind. I'm going to score this notoriety. Um you know, Notoriety is a good card, uh, and that's a deck to play it in for sure, right? And it's especially a good card against Jinteki because it means you can score um, without, uh, you know, without having to touch Jinteki agendas, right? Uh, it makes, you know, Philotic Entanglement a little worse, but that's, I mean, a little more dangerous, but that's okay. Um, I think with Notoriety is I don't see Notoriety as a card you play early, right? It's a card you play for the seventh point. It's not a card you play for the first first point, right? It's like you've get, you'll get to six points, and then, you know, maybe it'll be like you're at match point, and now Jinteki can mess with you. But it's like, nope, I don't care what you're doing anymore, Jinteki. I'm just going to score this notoriety for the win. That's what notoriety is for, right? Um, personally, I wouldn't put a notoriety into a deck that didn't already have three indexings, right? And the reason for that is that if you index, if you can play Notoriety, that means you can make a successful run on HQ, R&D, and Archives in the same turn. If you can do that, you can run R&D twice in the same turn, most likely, right? If you can run all three in one turn, you can run R&D twice in one turn. If you can run R&D twice in one turn, indexing is probably going to get you a safe point, even against Jinteki or any other faction, okay? Um... So, you know, for that final seventh point, an indexing will get the job done, right? As well as a notoriety. So I don't, I wouldn't put a notoriety in unless I already had three indexings uh, in a shaper deck, right? A notoriety is a lot less influence than some other deck. Um, you know, but the other, the other lesson to learn there is that, you know, against Jinteki or any damaging trying to kill you deck, playing a card is like taking a damage, right? Um, you know, so if, if you play, if Jinteki's sitting there and he install advanced advances behind an ice, you know, one ice. So you inside job, okay? Well, you were at five cards and now you're at four because you just played an inside job, right? That took your hand size down. If you were at four and you played an inside job going down to three, that might be a June bug. You might be dead, right? You know, so... Ideally, when you're when you're running on Jinteki servers, right? Criminals actually have this major weakness in that they're going to play events for those runs, decreasing their hand size. You know, run events are actually pretty bad against decks that are trying to flatline you, because you're effectively doing a damage to yourself when the run starts, right? Um, you know, I I think you know if you're gonna do that, you're gonna need. It would actually be good to have a card like Wildside or something, right? Where you're getting free draws, um, and then play run events, and when during the run you still have plenty of cards in your hand. Okay, so he's playing The World Is Yours. He opens up the game with uh, a blue level clearance and an ice on HQ. I install a data sucker and dirty laundry the open R and D. I think I see a sweeps week. I'm glad he didn't have that on turn zero, because I'm Andromeda. Um, you can play it next turn and get four credits instead. And I drop two same old things, because it doesn't cost me anything to do so. I just got to, you know, rescue them. Whoa, whoa, is this the first turn? Oh, he's Baddock, what? Oh, Baddock, ask your script right away. Whoa, so four, five, six, seven. Credits, yep. Oh, man, that first, you know, people don't realize this. You can first turn a Baddock, ask your script, right? If you have a Baddock, an ask your script, and a shipment from Sand Sand in your opening hand, you can play the Baddock labor for four, leaving you with one credit, then play shipment from, uh, then install the ask your script, Right? So you have four clicks. 
You install Astro Script. That's now you have three clicks left. You spend two of them on shipment from San San to advance the Astro Script twice, and you spend your final click to use your final credit advancing the Astro Script, and you've scored an Astro Script on turn one. Right? Uh, that's uh, it's just crazy that that is even a thing you can do. Um, you know, and if you have three of each in your deck, uh, the odds of doing that are not awful. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have six cards in that opening hand if you include the mandatory draw. Uh, you can also do it on pretty much any other turn in the whole game. Right? And you only need five credits. And then once you've got that Astro script, oof, you only need like two credits to make your way through the rest of the game. It's so evil. And that's why this world is yours. Well, I call it the win is yours uh, deck. It's pretty strong right now. Um, but the deck that I'm playing, this criminal event deck, is is designed specifically to beat this, right? So you saw how bad it did against Jinteki because I'm so dumb at being criminal. Um, but I designed this deck to beat this opponent, right? Um, so let's see if it holds up. I've got a Katie Jones going. I've got Data Suckers going. Uh, I made him res his ice, which is a wraparound and a quandary. But he has an Astro Script. Um, plays an anonymous tip. Oh boy. See, anonymous tip, you, you know, you're sitting there as a runner thinking, okay, draw three, whatever. Anonymous tip is really scary when they have an Astro Script token because maybe they just drew one. <laughs> maybe they just drew one. Another Astro. Well, his credits are low, but all his ice are cheap to res, and he doesn't need credits to make it through the rest of the game. Um, you know, and he can always get a ton of credits at the sweep sweep, because my hand is pretty full. Okay, so, special order. Boom. What am I getting with the special order? Is it a corroder for that HQ? It is a corroder, so... I think I drew a special order, used it to get a corroder, installed the corroder... HQ is now super vulnerable, and with my last click, I will fill Katie up. Okay. Katie has nine credits now. That's a lot. Oof, but I really gave him a big window there. Right? He could he could score another Astro pretty much any second. Uh, and R&D is safe behind a quandary. Ugh. Um, did I learn my lesson uh, of same old thing, special order? Oh, now he's getting money. Is his turn take two hedge fund? I think his turn is take two hedge fund. So that's four, five, six. Yeah, I think it's nine credits now. <laughs> but, okay. Empty Katie. Now I'm mega rich. And account siphon. Right through that wraparound. Boom. I pay one to break the wraparound. I'll take five credits. Uh, then I will take two tags, right? So I'm going full tag me, right? I've already seen his biotic labor. When I see the biotic labor, right, I know for sure that this is the this is the win is yours deck, right? I know it doesn't have a scorch. It spent all his influence on three biotic labors. So same old thing, account siphon again. Boom, I'll take the rest of your money, and I'll take two more tags. Okay, trash Katie. I just emptied her for nine. I don't need her ever again. I just got ten... 18 credits from account siphoning you twice. And I have another same old thing on the table. You could have taken two and trashed it, right? But, you know, then what are you, what are you going to do? I'll, right? So the plan for beating this deck has come to fruition, right? The weakness of the world is yours deck uh, that rushes out the Astros, the Biotics and such is that... It runs low ice, and it runs weak ice. So what you have to be able to do to beat it is you're only going gonna, gonna to get a bunch of successful runs, right? But that's usually not enough to, to steal all the agendas and win unless you get really, really lucky. Um, so what you have to do is you have to make those few runs very, very punishing uh, for the corp, right? So account siphon, very punishing. Indexing, very, very punishing, right? Uh, something like, you know, interface, R&D interfaces and whatnot, you know, they're not that punishing uh, relative to, you know, the, the one-shot events, right? All right. He installs a new ice. I have a special order in my hand. I didn't need to use the same old thing. 
I get a YAG. Yep. I install it. Installing an expensive YAG is no problem because I have all this account siphon money. He's got one credit. This is, I think, the only. There's, there's very little ice I'm worried about, but I run R&D. I think I saw a hedge fund. Um, the Yog just took care of that quandary, no problem. Okay. And I'm running HQ regularly. He does not res, and there was an Astro script in his hand. Woo! That's the kind of luck you need, right? Um, but look, why was he holding that Astro script? Because the account siphons. He only had one credit. He couldn't score it. He needs two credits to score it. That's not a lot of credits, but it's still more credits than he had right there. I guess he, he could have used a shipment from Sansan, but it doesn't look like he has one right now. Um, you know? Oof. Ooh, his, his draw is getting rough. He draws a Beal. Oh, that pop-up window is going to help him a ton. Um... I mean, I'll get through it for free with the Yog, but he'll get credits if I run through it. Uh, and he doesn't, he only needs, you know, a, the pop up window credits are pretty much all he needs to, to go from, you know, not winning to, you know, winning everything. Oh man, the third Astro is in his hand already. Whoa. Okay, I have the Mimic. I dropped the Mimic. I'm not afraid of any ice now. Got a full stack. And I run RD. Is the pop-up window. Why did I pay for the pop-up window when I have a Yog? Okay. <laughs> Should not have done that. And... Oh. Oh. Profiteering. Very interesting card to use in a world as you... Oh, now I got the other Astro... Oh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, guys. Two Astros on my side, one on his side. Train has been derailed. But I really, I like that profiteering, right? If you're in a situation where you don't care, oh, well, if you give them bad pub, right, then that sort of makes, you know, cancels out the pop-up window. It, it's, you know, but it's not, you're not tracing in this MBN, right? The other MBN is tracing. So I don't, I don't like profiteering there. But here, that pile of credits might be all you need, you know, for the rest of the game. Right, so, um, and you know you're not taxing them with your ice so much um, as you are uh, taxing them by forcing them to run and see a lot of nothing on a lot of you know unproductive runs. Uh, so it doesn't really you know the bad pub are not going to help uh, the runner that much. Okay. So I run that remote there. It's a paper wall. I break it and it dies. Uh, access the card. It's a sand sand. He only has two credits, so I'm not even going to trash the sand sand at all. I just had to verify that it was a sand sand. And not, for example, another profiteering that's going to, you know. Oh. Why do I keep paying for this pop up window? I have a Yog. Is a Jackson Howard trash it? Run R and D again. Oh, I didn't pay for the pop up window this time. <laughs> All right. See, so, you now I could same old thing account siphon pretty much any time. He could also trash. Uh, my Katie Jones and my same old thing. At this point, I would trash that same old thing. The fact that I still haven't used it, right? Um, but the only reason I haven't used it to account siphoning it is because he hasn't had five credits. Now he's got five credits uh, again. But even if I do it, he can spend those credits resing that ice, right? So I, you know, then I won't be able to get my full value. But now he's played a hedge fund. Because he's played a hedge fund, I'm pretty confident that if I go for HQ for the siphon then um, he will not uh, be able to spend all his credits on the ice unless it's a Draco, and the siphon will be worth it. If he does spend all his credits in a Draco, 
go for it, right? But I ha basically, I have to do it now because he's got the sand sand on the table. Or I could just trash the sand sand, right? But he has a sand sand on the table and he has a pile of money, right? So I can't let him score off that sand sand, right? A beal or anything like that. So, yep. Am I going for it? Yep. Same old thing. And account siphon. Boom. I did it. And it's a toll booth. Oh, he was able to spend a whole bunch of credits on it. So, huh. There isn't really a point in siphoning away zero credits. I could keep going for the access. Yeah, so I spend three for the booth. Uh, then I spend two data suckers and the yog to break the booth. I get one data sucker back. Um, I should get one data sucker back. And I access the sand sand again. You can have the sand sand because you have no money. So I know you can't use your sand sand. Then I draw a card and run. Am I running R&D? Yeah. He gets his one credit from his pop-up window and a blue level clearance. Okay. Yeah, I think one addition to my deck should be Armitage, right? If you're tagging, if you're doing a tag me deck, Armitage is very important as a closed accounts uh, defense, right? Um, and I'm basically gambling here that his World is Yours deck does not have closed accounts in it. Uh, or because, like, I'm 100% sure he doesn't have Scorch because I've seen these blue level clearances and these biotics and stuff. But I'm gambling he doesn't have closed accounts. I gambled wrong because there it is, right? Um... Because the world is yours, you know, Astro Rush decks, they don't have tagging in them. So if they don't have tagging, why would you play, you know, you're basically playing closed accounts hoping the runner tags themselves, right? Okay, so I install the same old thing and siphon with it. Spend the three on the booth, spend the two data suckers and the yog. I take away five credits and I get ten. And even more tags. Have I? I think I've used the one account siphon four times uh, with three same old things. <laughs> Run R&D, C and RSVP. Okay. Is the closed accounts going to come out now that I have 13 credits? Click one, closed accounts. Oh, my money. Oh, my money. No, not my money. He, he can't trash Katie Jones, though. It's it's like I only used her once at the start of the game as like to get going. And if I fill her up, she'll just get trashed, right? But maybe it's worth it to, if, now that I need money, right? Maybe it's worth it to click her once or twice, force him to try to trash it, right? To, and if he doesn't, I'll have money. And if he does, that'll slow him down, right? So, okay, I'm just, I just drew a card and took three credits. I feel like I should have drawn, taken two, and filled Katie. That would have been a much better turn there. Because um, it's basically saying, hey, are you going to take two and trash Katie? Good, you lost your turn, right? Or, um, you know, yeah. Just because you're tagged, don't be afraid to use, a, you know, spend a, one, at least one click, uh, I wouldn't invest a ton of credits into a Katie Jones if it, if you spend like three clicks in a row on it, you're basically you know just hurting yourself. Okay, so sure gamble, desperado. Yeah, so I took two, played sure gamble, and played desperado. So I had three, I got went up to five, I went up to nine, and then down to six. Now that I have desperado, uh, I can make a lot of money uh, running. At least I can't make money running HQ with the toll booth there, but I can make money running archives um, and data suckers at the same time. And if that's two pop-up windows on R&D, he'll get two credits and I'll get one every time I run it. I got a lot of data suckers too. Uh, I don't think he can keep me from filling them, so the toll booth uh, is not so scary.
Oh, he uses his Astro token to score a profiteering. Okay. He's only doing one bad pub for five credits. Still, that's enough credits now to use the Sand Sand uh, that is sitting on the table. Um, but it's now cheaper for me to trash that Sand Sand. Do I trash it? I take a credit, at least. Oh no, I'm running Archives. Uh, so I get the Desperado credit and a Data Sucker. He left me a point in Archives without a Jackson Howard to defend it. It wasn't Game Point though, because it was just a breaking news. I'm really checking out his archives, you know, counting the biotics and the other things in there. Right, seeing the, the closed accounts is in there. All right, so it's six to three. Now I'm running the sand sand and trashing it. Yep, because he has enough money to use it, uh, I'm going to trash it. Now I'm running R&D. Is it two pop-up windows? I mean, he can biotic at this point, right, to go to five points. Uh, he doesn't res, access, nothing. Um, I'm running HQ. So I spend three, well I spend two and a bad pub and two data suckers getting one data sucker back. I access another sand sand. Uh, I'll let him keep it because uh, he can't really install and use it in the same turn, right? And he doesn't have a remote uh, that can be protected. So um, I'm fine with him holding the sand sand if he puts it on the table. I mean, I'm going to run all pretty much anything he installs in this game from now on, right? In a remote. Um, Yep, he drops the sand sand. Okay, so now I can trash it. And with the bad pub and the desperado, it effectively only cost me three uh, to trash it. So, Oh, but he's icing it. Uh, well, maybe if he reses those ice to protect it, he will spend so much money that he can't use the sand sand. Um, okay. Running R&D. I probably didn't do enough just HQ runs... Uh, this game, right? To, you, we can see those agendas in his hand, right? Uh, and I'm not accessing them because all my HQ runs were account siphons. That's something that can happen if you're a non-Gabe criminal is all your HQ runs are like, you know, they're not HQ runs where you're accessing because you're not just trying to get HQ runs. You're trying to get, you know, account siphon and shut down and whatever. So you're not actually accessing cards from HQ all that very much, but you think you are, because it's like, I ran HQ a lot, look how many times, yeah, but you didn't access even one card, <laughs> maybe a couple cards from HQ. There's points in the Nar Hills, okay. I ran the remote, there's a paper wall, I used the bad pub to kill it off. Okay. I, yep. Three, four. Yeah, I, okay, so I spent four to trash it, and then the, the Desperado, right? I'm really low on money, but uh, I couldn't let that sand sand be there when he had when he has that kind of money. Oh wow, he's holding um, that agenda that's a three pointer. If the runner is tagged, right? He's not. I don't, you know, it doesn't look like he's playing a mid season or anything, which is usually the only deck you play that card in. But that's. That's actually, I mean, any PD is just too good, though. But to run that um, is not the worst idea, you know, considering, you know, if you believe my theory that the weakness of the win is yours is the tag me deck, right? That's a form of tag punishment, is that the win is yours can, you know, maybe double biotic that thing out for three points, or biotic sand sand it, or who knows what. Or a biotic and an astro token for three points, right? You could have two astros and then just one of those. Boom, game over, right? As opposed to needing like a Beal and a breaking news. Okay, so I'm running R&D. Oh, it was another toll booth. Well, that's fine because he's broke again. And if he's broke, he can't score. 
Alright, and I have two credits and a bad pub. Then I use two data suckers and the Yog carries me through and I get one data sucker back uh, on the successful run. And then a Desperado should hit, giving me a credit. This is why Yog is so sick, right? Um, did I not break through? What, I don't know. Did I not access the card from R&D? What happened there? His R&D is looking really thin, though. I can't really tell what happened there from the video. <laughs> I should have accessed R and D. At this point, even with the toll booth there, right? Because I have the bad pub and the yog, I can basically pay two credits and the desperado. I can pay. Basically, it cost me one credit and one data sucker per HQ access through the toll booth. Okay, so I'm running archive, a CNR SVP. That gets me a credit and a data sucker. I run HQ, right, yeah. So I spend three and two data suckers, but then I get back one data sucker and one credit. And one of the three I spent was a bad pub. So it cost me one credit and one data sucker to get to HQ. And, oh, that's not an agenda. I should do it again. Yep. Effectively spending one credit and one data sucker to get in. Right. Mm. See the same card again. Wow. Taking a credit. Okay. So I can run HQ three times next turn. If I take a credit, I can run it three times. I probably should have run it with my lat. Look how many agendas he's holding. I didn't touch any of them. Oh, man. That was really unluck right there. Dice, what are you doing to me, Dice? What are you doing? Oh, closed accounts again. Yeah, see, I should have made a, th a third run uh, because taking a credit there was just opening it up. So he has two closed accounts in this deck. And he sweeps, but I have a tiny hand, right? I'm basically just opening myself up to Scorch here. Tiny hand to punish sweep sweep. Tons of tags. But he doesn't have a Scorch because I've counted his influence. I assume he's got three biotics, um, probably correctly. And the closed accounts, as we've seen, I can... I, I can recover from. Right? Okay, so. It only costs, it costs, oh, this is the thing, right? Is even though it only costs me one credit and one data sucker net to get to HQ, I need to have at least two uh, credits in my credit pool to do it because the bad pub is the third one, right? If I don't have at least two in my pool, then I can't actually break the, get through the toll booth, so. I take three and run HQ, and there it is, breaking news. Whoa, look at all those agendas in there. Wow. Yeah, uh, you, you know, that's, that's the only way to beat this deck, is you have to block off their means of actually scoring, right? Um, you know, four account siphons can't be wrong, right? But look, if I had to remove all those tags, one, two, three, oh, three account siphons? One, two, three, four, five, six, six, all right. So... You know, three account siphons, three or four. That had to be three because I have six tags. Um, right? If you do that, if I remove those tags, that's 12 credits. But here I am at the end of the game, you know, with only two or three credits. I didn't have 12 credits to remove those tags. If you're removing tags, um, you're not going to beat this deck, right? Um... You know, I absolutely had to keep those tags. And even if I installed Plaskretes, that might have slowed me. Even just one Plaskrete, that, that would have cost me a whole turn in this game. 
Um, you know, you're just not going to be fast enough uh, to deal with this uh, world is yours situation. So yeah, it's interesting times here, right? Because on the one hand, you know, if you go into a tournament expecting to face this deck, this Astrobiotics, which I think you are going to see a lot of, you know, to beat it consistently, you might need this kind of criminal deck that's all tag me. But as you saw against that Jinteki opponent, this criminal deck is not that good. I mean, sure, a, with a better player <laughs> with criminal, it might, you know, you might do better with it. But we're getting into a rock, paper, scissors kind of situation, right? Do you just accept the losses um, against other decks? Or do you... Do you find a way to play this deck differently against other opponents? Um, or do you find something else that can beat the world is yours that isn't garbage uh, against uh, other corps, right? We'll soon see as regional season continues. Stay tuned. Round three is coming up.